Hello, Keith here, and welcome to the May 2023 update on our battery and solar installation. And we have seen the performance that we saw in April continue into May as days continue to get longer and the sunlight gets stronger. And as a reminder, as we get asked quite often uh, what we have installed, this is our installation. So we have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, nine panels on the west facing roof, seven panels on the east facing roof with a total installed solar capacity of 6.16 kilowatts. We also have five pylon batteries with a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatts and we have a Solis 5G inverter. So as we run through the representation of the solar day over the course of the year, let's take a look at the results for May 2023 and the significant savings that we've made for this month. So, uh, midway through the month on May the 15th, based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of east-northeast at around five minutes past five in the morning, and it sets at 8.42 in the evening in the direction of west-northwest. There's a total of 15 hours and 37 minutes of daylight on this date. The 15th of May overall has an hour and 45 minutes more daylight compared to the 15th of April, and at the middle of the day, the sun is 57 degrees above the horizon, which is nine degrees higher than the same date in April. Weather-wise, we've actually had a really dry month. Uh, our rainfall levels have been significantly lower than the average for the time of year. Our Netatmo weather station only measured 11.7 millimeters of rain, which is only 28% of the average rainfall for May, according to our local Met Office weather station. However, that doesn't mean we've had endless sunny days. Uh, the UK's had a rather odd weather pattern where we've had high pressure set over us for what seems like weeks. But the position of it has meant that while the north and west of the country has seen high temperatures, here in the east, in Essex, we've had what seems to be a constant northerly or northeastern breeze. Uh, and that's meant much lower temperatures and cloudy mornings until the sun has burnt back the low cloud. So we've had some mornings with lower generation than we'd expect until the cloud clears. That being said though, we have still exceeded the generation that we saw in April. Overall, we have averaged 27 kilowatt hours of generation per day, and on nine days we generated at least 30 kilowatt hours. And for the month in total, we generated 829 kilowatt hours of solar generation. Our worst day, was the 12th of May, but we still generated 8.9 kilowatts for that day. And our best day was the 27th of May, where we generated 37.8 kilowatt hours. And if we look at the 27th of May on the Solis Cloud dashboard, you can see a number of peaks and troughs in the morning, and this is due to that constant scenario I mentioned of you know, the cloudy mornings. But the afternoon does see pretty consistent generation. Because this was a Saturday, we were running the washing machine and oven that morning, so our consumption of generated power was lower than normal for the day at around 82% of our energy being solar and the remainder being grid import. We'd also drained the batteries overnight as well, so that meant we did have to run on grid import in the morning until the sun was powering the house. So of the 38 kilowatt hours that were generated, we used 10 kilowatt hours directly from the panels and sent 11 kilowatt hours to the batteries and exported 16 and a half kilowatt hours back to the grid. And at the batteries, we used six kilowatt hours. And in terms of peak generation, in terms of kilowatt hours, we saw a maximum of 6.8 kilowatt hours at peak generation on the 29th of May and a minimum of 1.6 kilowatt hours on the 12th of May. Typically, on a daily basis, our peak generation was between 3 kilowatt hours and 6 kilowatt hours and for the month we averaged a peak generation of 4.83 kilowatt hours. And here we're showing our electricity usage split between grid import, battery usage, solar usage and grid export. The 20th of May was probably the best day in terms of the split between solar generated usage and grid import with 99% of our energy usage being directly from the panels and batteries. On that day, uh, we only imported 130 watts from the grid, uh, but we generated 37.7 kilowatt hours, and of that we used 
18 kilowatt hours and exported 22 kilowatt hours. That was also our best day of the month for exporting energy, uh, but for the month in total we exported 257 kilowatt hours which averaged around 8 kilowatt hours per day being sent back to the grid. And here is the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery and grid import for the month. As you can see we had 23 days in May when 95% or more of our electricity came directly from our solar generation and for four of those days we were at 99%. Uh, for the month in total 94% of our energy usage was from the solar panels and batteries with 6% imported from the grid. And this is how our import cost per day looks like. Uh, the blue is our stand-in charge currently at 42 pence per day and the orange is the grid import cost. Our average import cost per day is only 42 pence and that goes up to 84 pence per day if you factor in the stand-in charge. So, how did we do in May 2023? As we've seen, 94% of our electricity consumption in April was through solar generation, either directly from the panels or from the battery. Overall, we generated 839 kilowatt hours of electricity, of which we've used 297 kilowatt hours directly, and we've also exported 257 kilowatt hours and sent 275 kilowatt hours to the batteries. Our grid input cost for April was £26.13 and, and that was for just 39 kilowatt hours in total. We were also paid £19.95 uh, for our export for the month and that is up to the 27th of May and that reduced our electricity bill from £26.13 to £6.18. Our generated usage, if we hadn't have had uh, the solar panels in place would have cost an additional £209.15. So our total cost uh, in terms of the generated usage and the grid import uh, if we hadn't had this system installed would have been £235.27 based on the total house usage. So this month has continued in pretty much the same vein uh, as it did in April. Uh, we've generated an additional 196 kilowatt hours more than we did in April. Uh, that was actually a, another 30% increase on generation. We sent as well an additional 25 kilowatt hours to our batteries compared to last month. We also saved 36 pounds more than last month and saw an increase of 6% on our overall solar utilization. So in total for the year to date, we've generated 2.1 megawatt hours of which we've used 1.8 megawatt hours and exported 470 kilowatt hours. Our grid input total is 1.4 megawatt hours which is half of our grid input for the same period last year and as we come to the end of the first full year of operation of this installation in September I'll do a full one year overview. So that was our May overview. Uh, next month we will hopefully lose this constant northerly or northeast of the airflows and then not have these continual cloudy mornings because that will improve our solar performance first thing in the day but we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, as always let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see and if you found this video useful please do like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.